The U.S. and its allies are hoping the F-35 will stay relevant for decades to come. That's going to mean new sensors, weapons, and capabilities for the jet. What do those look like? Well, that's the topic of this next roundtable segment. We've talked about the need for more power. Let's talk about the systems that that power is supposed to go towards as the F-35 evolves. Michael, what are some of the technologies that they're looking at adding on to the jet? A near term, they're going to upgrade the radar uh, to incorporate the new Northrop Grumman APG-85. Uh, there's also uh, an expectation that the F-35 will be able to carry more missiles internally. Uh, there are sensor upgrades in the works. Uh, you know, there was discussion in the past about directed energy, but whether that's only five years away, uh, we'll see. Then, you know, as, as JJ alluded to earlier, uh, you know, possibly even the ability to control unmanned wingmen or collaborative combat aircraft. The CCA, which is something that we know is in the works a while, and the Air Force is focused on. That's been a program that's somewhat for future generation and guys, somewhat for F-35. It kind of seems a little bit in between. Well, what's kind of the, the chances, I guess, that the F-35 is going to be able to control these things in the near future? It's always been said, you know, by Air Force leadership that they want F-35 to be able to control CCAs. How it gets there, I think, is a huge question mark. I don't think that there's been a roadmap laid out for when and how that's going to happen. To me, it's just to be determined. Yeah. And remember also that controlling a CCA is very different depending upon which CCA we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The Increment 1 is essentially a bomb and missile truck that does very simple missions that you can program it basically to do by itself. As you get into successive increments, you add aerial combat capability, and that's going to be a more complicated mission, at least unless the CCAs have a lot of autonomy. Right, which is something that they're trying to build into the design, is make this as autonomous as possible. True, but at the same time, they're struggling with the limits of autonomy and how much can you let an aircraft do without human approval. And I think once the Air Force kind of gets its arms around that, understands what these things can do, how much autonomy you can let them have, I think then we'll see a clearer picture of how that integrates with the F-35, if it in integrates with the F-35, or, you know, maybe the Air Force walking away from the idea that F-35 needs to ever control CCAs. But another question that's still out there is if you have to do physical changes to the jet, like rewiring for some of this, and you're going to do a cooling system, do you wait and do a number of changes as a single block upgrade, or you, do you just bring jets in as they're available, do whatever is a, you can do to them right then, and then wait for the next one? We haven't seen that plan yet. Yeah, I actually think this gets into an important point about readiness uh, for this aircraft, which, um, you know, readiness uh, statistics, uh, the availability of this mission to fly the missions that are assigned to it uh, is, is disappointing uh, and has been for many years. Uh, the program is waging a so-called war on readiness right now, but at least according to the Pentagon's most recent weapons assessment uh, that was released you know, just a few months ago, progress has been stagnant. Uh, you've seen uh, declines in readiness metrics for the A and B. You've seen a little bit of improvement for the C, but this is all well below uh, program goals. And a big reason for it, as JJ alluded to earlier, is concurrency. There are, uh, you know, there are technically three different variants of this aircraft, but judging by where they are uh, when they are produced uh, in the development cycle, there could be dozens of versions. Uh, this problem is vexing for maintainers because you know you have to have a bunch of different types of parts, uh, different ways to maintain what should be the same aircraft. So when you have this uh, very highly concurrent development model and you're producing hundreds of planes a year, you lead into sustainment issues down the road. And that's not even getting into the US government's kind of lagging approach to setting up uh, engines sustainment, for example, uh, whether proper depot capacity was prioritized. Like, there's certainly plenty of blame to go around, uh, but these all kind of feed into the same ecosystem. Yeah, they're closing in on 1,200 jets delivered, and the sustainment enterprise has not scaled at nearly the same rate. That's a problem for the U.S. It's a bigger problem in some ways for the partner countries who have to wait in line with other partner countries for their local depots availability. So given all of that we just talked about, is there actually a solution to the readiness, sustainability challenges, or is it just kind of an inherent issue in the jet? In today's budgetary climate, is there a solution? 
I think it would be very hard. I think if you have tons and tons of money that you could just pump into the system to stand up, you know, a lot of new depots to get spare parts, you know, flowing, you know, maybe you're able to solve some of this. But I, I don't know. I think some of it maybe is intrinsic. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but I think maybe somewhere to look, at least in terms of uh, where new money is being spent, uh, Lockheed is investing about $350 million of the company's own money to improve the software development enterprise, essentially. So uh, a lot of the problems that we've discussed before, you know, you think of what you see in the labs is what's going to be replicated in the real world, and that's not what's happening. So one of the biggest things this program needs to do is close that gap between what they're seeing uh, you know, in their models and development, what's actually happening in the real world when they go fly the plane and test things. That's where I think you're seeing a lot of effort right now. Uh, but, you know, as Val said, you know, when you've got bills to pay, that's where you make the cuts. It's difficult to, to balance this as a technological problem, but also as a budgetary one. The sustainment enterprise is being improved. For example, the European jets all had to wait for the depot in Italy and now they've stood up another one in Norway to spread some of that around. But it really is a problem that seems less relevant to the fact that it's the F-35 than just any time you introduce this many aircraft of a single type into the world's fleets in a very narrow period of time, well, you've overcome the development problems, but now that pig has moved farther down the python and is hitting the sustainment enterprise.